Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you, and I'm looking forward to this. And uh, you said you came back here and you went off on other adventures, so that's good because actually it brings back some different kinds of experience, different things that uh, you've seen, and you're kind of making history because technically we've never had a human resources director before, and I think that's neat. And I hope uh, to meet with you at some point after you're acclimated and can get up to your office by uh, either ladder or <laughs> climbing up a thousand million right. stairs or whatever. But no, in all honesty, congratulations. And I do, like I said, hope to meet with you and, you know, find out a little bit more because last time I took a human resources class was, dating myself here, about 1983. And it was one of those electives, you know, <laughs> and just uh, so things have changed. And in a lot of instances, I really think they've changed for the better, yes, Ch you know, defining people's positions. Because there's some people that work incredibly hard, yes. and I'm looking forward to seeing their positions more defined and to reflect um, both their title, their responsibility, and, and their contributions to the community. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Yeah. Councilor DeCastro, please. Thank you very much. Good evening, Ms. Nine. Thank Good you evening, for coming in front of us. I, I did not have the opportunity to see your resume or curriculum vitae, and I just wondered, have you have you been a human resources director before? Yes, I am currently um, a human resources director, but that's of um, project planning, policy development, uh, strategic planning within uh, UMass Boston. Okay, so in that role, how many people do you supervise, govern, organize? Well, in that role currently, well, I'll just give you a back a little bit. The department is composed of about 19 full-time employees. Oh, wow. Okay. Each separated in the areas of benefits, recruitment, labor employee relations, okay. uh, data services. And my direct supervision, well, indirectly supervised, would be the entire office in the absence of the senior director of human resources. Okay. How many years have you been at UMass Boston? 25 years. Oh, my. Good for you. Thank you. Good for you. And you probably live closer to there. Uh -huh. Or you did. I did. Yes. I yes. did. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Council. Council Falwell, please. Yes, welcome to Brockton. Thank you uh, very much, Elected officials come and go. Mm -hmm. I view your position as one of the most important in the city. Mm -hmm. right. So the question I have for you, and I realize that you are dependent upon mayors to appoint you and reappoint you, but I just would like to, your assurance publicly that <coughs> if, if you see something that's about to happen, that is against commonly accepted human resources practices or could end up in significant liability for the city, I, I'm just asking you to be courageous and speak up. I know you have to follow orders, but document it to protect yourself and, and make sure that even though you work for the city, you actually work for all the residents. And so our interest is protecting their interests. So, that's my simple question. Would you, would you have any problem, uh, shall we say, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a mayor someday if he or she asks you to do something that's... Uh... I have no problem <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> She's got a longer reach, too. <laughs> well, well, I thank you very much, and I think as you assimilate yourself into this position, the council will be uh, happy to hear from you, happy to support you, and... Happy to see some of the changes that I think will be beneficial for Brockton, and I commend the mayor for finding a, a candidate of your caliber who's willing to tackle uh, the issues that are before us. So thank, thank you. you very I'm much. Looking forward to it. Thank, thank you, Council. Council, Council Darncourt, please. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Council. Chairman. Um, I would like to welcome you, um, and thank you for taking your time to come down. And I did speak with a few folks in regard to your appointment, and given the fact that, and some of them spoke really highly about you, and I'm amazed given the fact that um, you've been doing this job for 25 years. What I can tell you is that once you start doing the job, I was three, I'm 28 right now. Mm. And my colleague right here, the last time she said she took me, doing in classes was 1983. Thanks for, thanks for pointing that out. So I think, <laughs> even the fact that, you know, this city never seen a uh, female yeah. doing resources before, and I'm assuming that, I'm hoping you'll be the first one. So I am excited, and I could not be more proud to know that someone like yourself um, is going to leave you my spouse and to come to Brockton. Of course, you said it yourself. You used to live in Brockton, you left the city, and you come back. back. I think that's big level. I don't Community. think you come back just for that job, but I think you've already been back and stuff yes. like that. So for someone like myself, Community. which campaign on diversity, uh, mm -hmm. I could not be more happy, not just because of that, but seeing like a woman taking over that position. And like I said, um, I hope that you will have the courage, not just yeah. to occupy that position, but like my colleague said, to actually oversee what's going on and make the best decision for all of us. I mean, obviously, you know, you got appointed by the mayor, but I can't, you 
represent everyone. So I'm Absolutely. the kind of person that, that follow, you know, integrity and decency and honesty, and I speak my mind, so I could not be more proud to let you know that I will vote yes on your appointment. And Thank I you very much, Councillor. To, um, to do that. And I would like to motion this. Okay. Council, we have a few other questions for Council. Okay. Thank you, Council. Council Cruz, please. Thank you. Uh, congratulations and uh, good luck, and glad to have you back in the city. Uh, uh, interesting what Council Beauregard had to say that we've never really had a human resources director before. Most people don't know we'd never have had a human resources director. The ordinance setting up the prior mm -hmm. office is a personnel department. Yeah. Um, obviously, we are looking at making major changes, but right now there's only three personnel in that office. Sure. And two of them are, are restricted to what they can work on. Okay. How do you see the next steps and how do we get to where we need to be to <coughs> make it a human resources department? Um, let's see, I think the commitment that I have in making this a functional human resources department is a start. Um, I'm not sure of the whole uh, staffing within a department at all, but once I get in, I would definitely reevaluate it and look for more resources if, if, you know, if they're to grow the department as well. Yeah, we're going to need that, absolutely. But that's going to mm -hmm. take some ordinance change. And in the short term, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, you know, you, it's going to take time to yes. do so, but I'm committed to, to that. And mostly I'm asking that so the people at home understand that, that this isn't going to happen overnight. Not at all. And that many of the people who <coughs> always thought we had a human resources director, we did not, by the way it was set up. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, full disclosure, the former personnel director was my sister, mm -hmm. and I know, know that the amount of work that <laughs> comes with that job, which is partly why uh, I'm happy to be putting this at the higher rate and where you're coming from, where it's good to have a human resources director with that uh, background, and again, you're going to need a lot of help just getting the department to become a human resources department, and we're going to have to f act quickly mm -hmm. on an ordinance to establish that. We, months ago established the title, but we never have established what that human resources department is going to do. And until we do, her hand hand's going to be tied, so we need to move quickly as a council to forward on that. And the mayor's going to have to come up with some money to add some personnel to that department because you literally cannot do that job as a human resources yeah, department with sure. the staff you have. You just It isn't physically possible. So I'll be happy to, happy to be part of that, get that going, and Hopefully you can help us in drafting the ordinance to, to move that forward. Thank you. So, thank you. That, thank you, Council. Council Rodriguez, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome to the city again. Thank you so, Well, much. city government. Uh, not the city, but welcome to city government. Um, uh, as you may already know, um, one of the uh, heaviest burdens that we, that your department will have is the benefits package mm -hmm. that comes along with, um, with city budget. Uh, we spend somewhere around 50 something plus million dollars uh, on a yearly basis to provide benefits to um, the workers or the staff of city government. And one of the concerns that I've always had is that um, it seems that there's always been, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the major uh, hiccup is in terms of you know, uh, the city uh, joining the state's uh, insurance plan versus uh, continue to stay on a private plan where we had several years ago an opportunity to save millions of dollars by doing that. But for some odd reason, there was a major pushback from the city itself in terms of uh, allowing us to move forward with that. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is the, the fact that we often uh, in this city tend not to think outside of the box. Uh, we want to do th things as business as usual, and we haven't quite realized that this is 2018 going in 19 very soon, and things have to change. We can't continue to doing the same exact thing, expecting different results, because it just doesn't work that way. So I'm hoping that you, and I was happy to sponsor this order to bring you on board, um, because I'm hoping that you'd come from an outside, um, with an outside perspective, to look into possibilities. Uh, as a fresh person coming into the job, it might be a little easier for you to sell some of the ideas uh, that you would need to sell to somehow reduce the cost associated with benefits in the city. And, and to basically seek out whatever we need to seek out to reduce costs. Because if we have an ability to save a couple million dollars here and there that we don't have to pay in benefits or at least paying to 
private insurances and some of these other things, those are funds that we can put someplace else to help us in this city. As you know, we are not one of the, the uh, richest cities in Massachusetts, uh, but we could use whatever breaks and opportunities that we have. So I'm hoping that, again, take up uh, what Council Cruz was saying in terms of utilize some of us if you, if you have to, to help you push some of these agendas. Some of us feel very strongly about things like that. And I believe it's an easier sell if, you, uh, if we do this in a, uh, in a form of a partnership. I know Council Falwell basically asked you that pointed question in terms of you, know, you and the mayor. Uh, I don't see you being a, a worker of the mayor or of anyone else, but the director of HR for the city of Brockton. And that to me is as important as anybody that appointed you or not appointed you. Uh, chances are the previous uh, personnel person was here over 30 years. 40. 40 years. Oh my God. So uh, chances are most of us will probably be way long gone by the time you reach your 30th anniversary. Well, Lally, he'll still be here. Lally, <laughs> and that other guy that always you keeps. Calvary, but, no, uh, no, I think uh, either that or, or, or Joseph, Ma uh, St. Joe's, you know, St. Joe's the retirement home. Yeah. But, um, but I just wanted to make sure that we leave it out here publicly that, um, that we're willing to do this as a team because mm -hmm. we have to do this. Uh, there's no reason why uh, we can't work together to resolve these, uh, these issues and, and please take into account every single idea, every single thought that comes out because it shouldn't just be the mayor's. Mm -hmm. It should be everybody's because we are paying for this uh, together. Uh, our taxes keep going up universally and we're all paying for this, so I think it's important for us to work together to get this stuff done. Yes, thank, thank you, and again, you. welcome to, uh, to the job. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Lally, please. Thank you. I just wanted to say, you know, welcome to the city. Um, I, I, don't know how, I, don't know, I don't know how long I'll be around. I'm, I'm getting old, Councilor. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the last time Councilor Beauregard went to an HR class, you know, as, as Gene pointed out, uh, last time Councilor Beauregard went to a uh, HR class, I, I was not eligible to take that class for some reason or another. <laughs> Uh, maybe I wasn't born, you know, maybe not. Um, no, I, I just wanted to, you know, welcome you to the city. Uh, and I just wanted to ask, you know, as, as have, has been mentioned, you know, there, uh, you know, there's some big steps ahead for the department. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know, you know, what's, what's the, the first step? You know, what, are, what do you think that needs to happen first? How, what, what gets the ball rolling? Um, like I mentioned in my opening statement, the first thing I would like to uh, concentrate on or focus on, I would say, is the hiring processes and policy development. Okay. And I think that would be the uh, starting point to go forward with some of the other areas that we can look at. But I think that would be my focus getting in there. All right. No, that's, uh, that is something that we've, we, uh, we have had you know, discussions about. So I, uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Councilor, Councilor Lally. Ms. Knight, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, good evening, and thank you for applying for this job. And, thank you. And welcome to the city government. In, in terms of your, your current position or, mm -hmm. or your past professional endeavors, the way that I look at HR and an and in-house um, law department, be it at UMass Boston or the city of Brockton, I mean, there's a, a direct nexus there. They, they have to work together. Mm -hmm. It's a collaborative approach. Mm -hmm. I guess currently in your position at, at UMass, um, do you meet on a regular basis and, and go over certain um, HR issues with the, the lawyers, the in-staff lawyers? And then how do you see that happening uh, in the city of Brockton as well, where we have a city solicitor's office to try to, you know, stave off potential lawsuits and to deal with, you know, different employee uh, potential litigations? Well, firstly, we don't have an in-house uh, in lawyer. We do have a general counsel's office, which is located in another area within within, within the right. Yeah, the so we do system. interact yep. with them yep. as if if we need to. Um, I think right now, I think the the best approach for me is teamwork. That's the the way to make things happen. I don't have a problem going down to the law office. I don't have a problem running things by the lawyers. I think that's the first step. I, it's always good to have a second set or third set of eyes whenever you're even developing a policy. You just want to make sure it's aligned with any type of either contractual or non-contractual. We just want to make sure that we're in the scope of the guidelines. 
and in terms of at least past practice in the city of Rockton with the collective bargaining and at the table, it's you know it's been Jay Condon, mm -hmm. uh, it was it was Maureen Cruz as well. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you how do you envision and, and have you had the experience where you you sit at the table on negotiations? Oh yeah, definitely yeah. Um, our negotiation team would be comprised of we don't have any lawyers at the negotiation team. Only when it becomes to um, you know ratifying or whatever yep. the president's office needs to go ahead and look at the um, contract. But it'd be my, it would be myself. Uh, we would have a member of the employee relations team. Um, we would have uh, representatives from each collective bargaining agreement on the other side, and we'll have some others from management with us as well. So it's a diversity, you know, a diverse group of people on the side of management as opposed to the other side. Good. So it's definitely a, a skill set that mm -hmm. you. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. Good to hear. Mm -hmm. Good to hear. Councils, before we get into uh, the follow-ups, I just want to remind you again, and I know you wanted to make a motion, but um, what's before us right now is simply the appointment of Ms. Knight. Mm -hmm. uh, within the uh, the actual order uh, that was executed by Mr. Rodriguez, we also have to make an amendment relative to approving the city council approval of the authority to hire her at the, at the top step of the present rate of the ordinance salary for the title of director of personnel. Said rate is currently $104,430. Um, so that has to be in the form of a motion relative to we, what's Mr. before Mr. us. Mr. Chairman, just, do we need to just add the second and third paragraphs of the original order? Is that, would that be a We were advised today by uh, our legislative council, and thank you, Mel. Mel, Mel brought it to my attention um, that it's not incorporated within the actual language on the agenda. So Attorney Resnick uh, wants us to make an amendment relative to that With that second and third paragraph? Item. Would, Correct. So, Councilor Cruz. I'd make a motion to add... Uh, after the first paragraph, in accordance with the provisions of Section 2-131 of the revised ordinances, with approval of the City Council, the authority to hire Ms. Knight at the top step of the present rate of ordinance salary for the title Director of Personnel. Said rate is currently $104,430. There are sufficient funds in the Department's budget to support this action. The revised ordinances do not currently contain a salary structure for the title Director of Human Resources, which would reflect the level of duties and responsibilities now placed in the position. By separate communication, the mayor has filed an ordinance request to establish that salary. Form of a motion. That's a motion. Second. So second uh, to that motion relative to the amendment. All in favor of that amendment as stated. All opposed. That amendment's going to carry. Were there any other follow-up questions relative to the applicant before us? No. Councilor. Yeah, it's not a question. Um, I would like to pick back to what um, Council Cruz just mentioned. I believe when I first got elected, um, I went to City Hall, and at that time it was more in Cruz, and I asked her, you know, um, what kind of resources that she would need in regard to you know, her office to be effective. And she mentioned staff. She said that she has a very small staff. It would be good for her to have like, you know, at least one or two more people. And I think that you perfectly said it. Um, given the fact that this is a new position in which that we never <coughs> had before, I would assume that you will talk to the mayor in regard to how can you expand the staff that you have over there in order for you to be effective. And I'll be more than happy not just to support, but also to talk to the mayor in terms of like whether or not you need one or more two people, because I think Giving your position right now, it will require more times. And in order for it to be effective, you're going to need somebody that can actually do the job. And I don't want to just, you know, vote on your positions and forget about, like, the necessity that we will have in order for it to be effective. So I think that effectiveness will come on, you know, the team that you have. Mm -hmm. And I think it will be important, not just to you, but also to all of us in the city to understand in order for you to be good at what you do, you need a support system that can be there for you. So I just want to make that point, given the fact that you also said it, because more in Cruz, literally stated that the stuff that you know she had at that time was too small for her and sometimes she has to wait and work long hours and stuff like that so um, I know that it's gonna be a lot of work so I'll just saying it publicly that I would support you asking for one or two more people that you believe will you know be effective to you based on what you hope to do yeah, thank you you're welcome thank you council any other questions motion oh, sorry on the, on the motion okay. council Rodriguez I just have a quick question for you um, in your previous employment, did you oversee the benefits department as well? Uh, no, I did not. It was HR alone and then benefits a separate department? Yeah, the benefits, like I said, is comprised of different, you know, different subgroups within a department, but benefits, no, I didn't have that piece in there. Okay. And what was, um, what was the overall budget of your department, do you remember, uh, oh, in terms gosh, of how much dollars and cents were you guys working with or at least responsible for? Uh, we have a budget and operations manager who handles all the budget piece of that, so I'm not sure what the overall budget is for our department itself. Yeah. So you're not exactly sure 
you know, how many millions of dollars you were responsible for in terms oh, of moving. Oh, it wouldn't be millions of dollars, yeah. Yeah. But. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I just had a quick question if no one objects. The mayor's here, and I know he has to, an engagement in, in Boston as well, so he's going to have to depart. Anybody have any objection to have the mayor? I just had a question no. for him. No. Mr. Mayor, thank you for being here. I, I know time is of the essence for you. Obviously, just with some of the statements of the council, there's definitely a need to, to have more staff in this department. Mm -hmm. and, and again, not to put your feet to the fire because we're in a current budget right now, but do you envision in this, in this fiscal year doing that, or do you think it's going to be at the next fiscal year? No, I, I, the, uh, if you'll recall uh, when we had the uh, Miria Cardi from the Collins Center come in and present her detailed analysis to you of her review of the personnel department, there were a number of recommendations in that report. One of her key recommendations was the creation of a number two position under the new human resources director, and I believe that position was described as a hiring specialist, someone that would really have some specific duties around uh, compliance, around um, uh, serving as chief diversity officer for the city, wearing several hats. And one of the conclusions, and so I agree with everything the council has said here, uh, one of the conclusions of that Collins Center report was that the former position could not and should not be replaced by one person, that it really, those duties should be divided amongst two positions and describe the second position. Uh, the reason, as recommended, we did the search for the Director of Human Resources first is we thought it was very important to bring in the new leadership to the department and then have the new leader of the department oversee and be uh, intricately in involved in the selection of that uh, second position. Um, to give you a baseball analogy, you hire the manager before the pitching coach. So I think our intent in bringing uh, the Director of Human Resources appointment forward first is so that the manager could be in place to help us select the pitching coach. But I do agree with the council, there's a, there is a critical need for another position. If we're going to build a true HR model, which is what was presented to the council in the Collins Center report, uh, it is going to require another person working um, under the director in a position that does not exist right now. But in that report, if you go back and look at it, it gives you a detailed description of what that position would be and what the job description and responsibilities would look like. But it would be as the key number two person in the Human Resources Department. Thank and you, I'm, Mr. Mayor. I'm committed, I'm committed to bringing that forward as soon as we can. Thank you. Any questions for the mayor? None? Motion to recommend favorable. As amended. As amended. Uh, motions on the floor, are properly seconded, um, to uh, to move this forward with favorable, as amended, back to the full. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just on, a, on the motion real quick, are we going to... Because I noticed that I, I brought this up when we were discussing the position, the title of the position. Is it Director of Human Resources or is it Human Resources Director? I think we need to stick with one. We can't keep yeah. uh, flipping and flopping it's, all over the place. It's written in the ordinance that you passed. No, it's, it, it refer, it, on the top it says one thing and then later on it says something totally, uh, that it reverses it. In the actual mm -hmm. uh, ordinance that you guys already accepted, changed? It. changed? Right. Well, we changed the, t the job title to Director of Human Resources. Okay. But everywhere, if you even look at this order, it says Human Resources Director. You know, so I think... I, I assume they were interchangeable, but uh, to the council's pleasure, whatever you'd like to establish. What do you want on your door? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think should, Yeah, we'll ask Sandra. The title was on the door. Director of Human Resources. Director of Human Resources. About Director of Human Resources. I think if, if we do, the then we stick question. with that and just refer okay. to it as such and not flipping and flopping all over the place for Sorry. whatever reason. Thank you, Councilor. Point taken. Um, so favorable recommendation back to full council as amended. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Thank you, Councilors. Just remember, Mr. Mayor, the baseball analogy was good, but the football analogy, Indianapolis Colts, what did they do? They hired a defensive coordinator, and McDaniels did wasn't coaching, so. And how did that work? How did that work out? <laughs> uh, <that's> so good. <laughs> so good. So uh, yeah, that's the Mayor. point. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Councilor. Mr. Chairman, uh, with respect to the next item on the agenda, number Council. three, yes. Attorney Resnick uh, was really? not. I think we're on number two, number Council. We're on number two. two. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to rush myself here. My apologies. It's a little bit late, so yeah. it's, it's eye surgery, Mr. I Chairman. I understand, Council. I, I understand. We're going to go to number two, <clears throat> please. 
Appropriation of additional grant funds in the amount of $40,822 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, State 911, Department Fiscal Year 2019, Public Safety Answering Point and Regional Emergency Communication Center Support and Incentive Grants to City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal Year 2019, Public Safety Answering Point and Regional Emergency Communication Center Support and Incentive Grant Fund. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Chief Police. Chief, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Do you have any statement on this? Uh, this is just a supplemental appropriation to a grant that was already passed. Public. Motion to recommend favorably. Okay. Motion made was properly second favorable recommendation back to full council. If you're in favor, raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. It carries. Favorable back to the full council. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chief. Councilor Fowler, did you want to say something before the matter is read on number three? <laughs> yeah, so now, now on to number three. Uh, Attorney Resnick was not invited to attend tonight, and she is not here, and I would move to postpone this to a finance committee yes, meeting second. in November. <clears throat> do you want to do the first or second for a date specific? Your, your, your pleasure, whatever. The second? Let's do the second. Second FinCom in second November. Second FinCom in November. Okay. Motion on the floor to postpone this matter to the second FinCom in November. All, all in favor? All opposed? That motion carries. We're going to postpone it until the second FinCom in November. We're going to go on to number four, please. Ordered that the sum of five million is appropriated to pay additional costs of developing a parking garage and for making street and traffic improvements within the development district approved by the city and being taken undertaken in conjunction with Trinity Financial and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to MGL Chapter 40Q, the District Improvement Financing Statute, MGL Chapter 44, and or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city, therefore, that such bonds or notes shall be general obligations of the city, although such bonds or notes shall be payable in the first instance, from public, sorry, from property tax revenue expected to be derived from new development within the dis development district. The amount authorized to be borrowed pursuant to this order shall be expended in addition to all amounts previously appropriated by the city for this project, as well as all other amounts received from, by the city from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and from Trinity Financial to pay costs of the project ordered any premium received by the city upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this order lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this order in accordance with MGL chapter 40 section 20 of the general laws thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount ordered that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts's Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Chapter 44A of the general laws any and all bonds or notes of the city authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as the Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may require. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Martin S. Brophy, Treasurer Collector. Councils, I'm going to ask for a, a motion to take number five and four collectively. Mm -hmm. uh, so moved. Okay. Motion's made. Is there a second? Is there a second? All in favor of taking them collectively? All opposed? That carries. If we could read number five, please. Sure. Resolved that Chief Financial Officer John Condon and Director of Planning and Economic Development Rob May appear before a committee of the City Council to review the parking garage project, the reasons for the deficit, and strategies to ensure adequate funding for the construction of this facility. Invited John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Robert May, Director, Planning and Economic Development. Councilors, I know we have all the gentlemen here tonight. Um, if you want to come forward, I don't know who wants to start. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Councillors. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to just start before you, gentlemen. As you know, I have a little bit of a team behind me. I like what Council Rodriguez said. This is a team effort here. A mm -hmm. um, couple of things. Um, I want to say personally ob object, but Trinity is not part of this deal other than being just in a butcher um, in the fact that we are acquiring lot three from Trinity. Um, I think in the beginning, and this is this project goes back before me, uh, back in 
17, 16, and everyone here knows that we're probably like a year and a half, almost going on two years behind in this project. Um, as a result of taking Trinity out of this, um, and I'll just go back a little bit because I don't want to digress on, on, where, on how we got here, but more so where we're at. Um, with Trinity, a result of Trinity being out of this deal and us doing a more public process, which I agree with, procurement process, mm -hmm. because 100% of the money in this now is public money and there should be a public process. Um, we chose to go with Mass General Law 149A, which I'm becoming a little bit of an expert on these days, uh, but I do have Alicia Tony from Pink here, who is the expert, which we hired as a uh, owner's project manager, um, to negotiate one with Trinity for the site. Um, I think several counselors and I have been in conversations during that, what I would call uncomfortable negotiation. We then did acquire that site for $263,000. The plans, not the site, the plans, but in order to get the site, we had to get the plans with it. Uh, we were told at the time that those plans were anywhere from 60 to 70 percent completed. My personal opinion, they were more like 50, 55 percent after the work we've done. Um, I think Pink will give a better assessment of that. But personally, I've seen construction plans before. These plans were not near 50, 60 or 70 percent completed. With that said, we did go through the negotiation process with Trinity. We did acquire the plans with the help of the parking authority. We did buy those plans. We then, after looking at those plans, needed a lot of work done on this particular site. The difficulty, I think I sent a letter out to every counselor kind of identifying what those issues were with that particular site. Um, we then went through the procurement of also doing the CM at risk, construction manager at risk. That took us, a, and I think we did it in record time if you talk to Pink. We had that done in less than 30 days, having a construction manager on. Prior to that, though, once getting the plans from Trinity and negotiating the plan, we then had to negotiate with their architect. For us to rehire an architect to, to take their stamp off of those plans would have set us back at least six months, probably more like nine months to a year. Um, so we did negotiate with Icon, they are now working for the BRA, which occasionally they do have to be reminded who they work for. Um, with that negotiation, we now have in front of you, we just put out the last, pretty much the last sub bids, filed sub bids. You had to be a filed sub bid in order to put in a bid for the last, and I, I stated this also in your letter, iron, material, fabrication, glass, windows, um, we had to put in that bid. We just got that bid in on Friday through Pink and Cole Antonio, who is our contractor, our construction contractor at risk. They worked over the weekend to get these budget numbers to me because I knew at Finance Committee and talking with several counselors, I wanted this information to you today, tonight. Um, if I had this $5 million in hand, we'd be digging dirt now um, in order to get this municipal garage built by next September, next October. The reality is, is that we are behind in schedule from now from Colantonio, from our schedule. With the process, and I understand the council has to go through their process, it's gonna put us nine weeks behind. We won't start digging up into the ground um, until we have the $5 million, until November 9th, I believe, based on your schedule. Um, and that's okay, because I'm, hopefully we have a mild winter and I can pick up some ground on the schedule as well with Cole Antonio. Um, I know there's been conversations, and if you look at this budget, the one thing I do want to point out in this budget is that the numbers that you see in red are the ones that are, how should I say, not confirmed. If you look to the far left on the road, the road for, my, for the building of the garage has been pretty much taken out, only because we, we've just started the design on the road. I have suggested to the mayor that, and Rob May and I have also conversed on this, we'll apply for a mass works for that money and also use CDBG, Community Development Block Grant, with approval from the mayor. That's where those funds will come from. If you look also on the red, if you see the red for the number eight, which is a water and sewer connection, 
Larry Rowley, the commissioner of DPW, and I have been talking. Hopefully he will choose to waive that since it is a municipal garage. We also are looking at security at the $60,000. Our estimates have come in at 80. The way we're gonna cover that is probably in our soft costs. If you look at the contingency for the owner's contingency, it's of roughly $20,000. We hope that, that that number doesn't reach over 20,000 over an additional $20,000 on that particular line item. And then on the survey, which is $5,000, we estimate it's gonna come in anywhere between 3,500 and $4,000. With all of that said, and of course we have the total fees, the fee is the 74,157 to the BRA for our efforts in working and managing this process. The number that we're looking for while we're asking for the $5 million, the number we're looking at is a $4,751,150. Um, I hope that we can continue to, to work at this as a team my job, and I've been told by my board that a financial package with all of the information, my board gets a financial package every month when we talk about the budget, that that budget also, once we have this final, and the reason why this is a draft now, there are just two line items or items that have not been included in, that have not been confirmed. They're included in the price. It's for caulking and, weather, and weatherproofing of the garage. Roughly 65,000 is what Cole Antonio and Pink thinks it's gonna come in at. That number is included in here, okay? Should it come higher, we'll find a place within this, within this budget to get that 65,000 or additional. The 65 is in here. If it comes in additional, we'll make it up somewhere within the budget. So with that said, um, I know this is the first hearing. I think I have three more to go to. Um, I'm always available. I think I've reached out to every counselor here um, some more than twice. <laughs> um, so if you have any questions for me in regards to this, that's why I'm here. And also I have Mr. Condon who can also talk about the diff because we feel that the diff can cover the additional all by itself. I have uh, Bob Malley here whose board voted last month that any, any money that the diff doesn't cover, the parking authority will cover. And that way none of this comes out of the taxpayer or general fund. This is all taxpayer money. Uh, I think we're all here to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. To one, to let the taxpayers know that one, this is a, what I call a critical project for the downtown, the district, but it's also critical for, for Brockton. Um, we have a grant from the state of $10 million. We're asking uh, for a total of $7 million from the city. With that said, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Shut up. <laughs> Mr. Fowell, followed by Mr. Cruz, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And as you know, you and I filed a resolve, which is item number five here. And there's no doubt that this project is very worthwhile. I think given the fact we're asking the taxpayers to come up with another $5 million plus whatever interest is involved, and I'll ask uh, Mr. Condon what the, the, the borrowing interest will be in this amount, I think it's important to have at least a little background for the public to understand where we were, where we've been, and where we're going. And, and with that, I just have a couple of questions for Mr. May and for Mr. Condon, and then I'll move on to a couple of other questions. Uh, Thank you, Councilor. Mr. May, I know there's been a lot that's gone back and forth uh, on this particular issue because it was, it was a <coughs> shock to find out that we were facing a $5 million deficit. Um, this is really the first principal piece of development downtown, and if the rest of the urban renewal project were to go in this direction where we find that we're woefully underfunded, it, it, it really could uh, put constraints on the city, and I'm also mindful of Mr. Condon's um, certification or conditional or, or cautious certification on the borrowing of this $5 million. It is fair to say that in September of 2016, the city submitted a request for funding to MassWorks. Is that, it was signed by you, dated September 2nd? It, yes. it wasn't Trinity's, it was ours, correct? It, it was ours, yes. Okay, uh, so. Trinity did help prepare the um, yeah. application. And at some point, we found out that we would be getting 10 million instead of 15, which was correct. originally requested. And in fact, I think the Lieutenant Governor announced that in November, 
Uh, and so we were back to really having $5 million less than we anticipated. Now, at some point, and I don't have all the correspondence, your office would, I take it that Trinity said, well, time out, we can build this if we modify the garage, we can get it down to $12 million. Is that a fair statement? That is correct. Okay, now, when that happened, who verified their work? Did, we, did the city have an architect? Did the city have an engineer? Or did we simply take Trinity's word for it? At that time, Trinity was the project manager. They were going to be building the garage. Yes. Um, and they were um, the city's partner in, uh, in, in procuring the garage and making that happen. So I, uh, uh, we used Trinity's numbers. So we, we trusted them? Yes, we did. We trusted them. All right. Now, in February of 2018, and this is after the torch had been somewhat passed to, uh, to Mr. Jenkins, the council was asked to authorize an agreement with the BRA and, and to release or to authorize expenditure of the funds. And there was absolutely nothing mentioned of any projected deficit because we had a different person in the White House or we might have cost increases, labor cost increases. Among all of you gentlemen, what happened between February of 2018, February 12th when we had a council meeting, and September 5th when suddenly we found out that we were $5 million underfunded? Who, who contacted us or where did that information come from that we suddenly realized we had a problem? Whomever might be able um, to answer that. Councilor, right? at the time that uh, we were partnered with Trinity, uh, they promised to be able to build a garage for uh, the 12 million dollars in uh, uh, state and and city f uh, funding and their private financing since Trinity was no longer uh, associated with the project uh, it, it was very clear that council did not want Trinity involved um, there were several um, economies of scale that uh, that we lost uh, there was also um, a series of financing mechanisms that Trinity probably would have used to contribute to the garage that uh, all became our responsibility. Uh, on top of that, uh, I'll let Mr. Jenkins discuss, but since the, the delay of, of going forward, um, there have been uh, the cost of steel, the cost of concrete has all gone up, cost of labor has gone up. But when we submitted the material to council for the $12 million project and to accept that grant, that was the cost of the garage. All right, I, I will say to you that when you submitted it to us in February, you also included, and it was an attachment and an email, the original grant application you filed, which had the $17.5 million yes. garage in it. So we were dealing with two different figures. We were dealing with apparently well, the figure that Trinity thought they could do it for, but then we were dealing with the original figure. But, but I guess my after, question... After learning that uh, we only had a $10 million grant and not a $15 million grant with the state, we did sit with Trinity and their team uh, to negotiate a, a downsizing of the garage. We uh, <coughs> removed some underground excavation. We reduced the, the size of the garage. There were a couple of other uh, value engineering activities, and that's how we got to the 12.5, and that's the number that we brought to City Council. But if we didn't have completed plans, if they didn't have completed <coughs> plans, and we hadn't issued a single bid with any response, how could you possibly... How could anyone possibly Trinity arrive as at 12 developer million? was comfortable and confident that they could deliver the garage with the 12.5, or with the 12 million dollars in um, uh, state and city assistance? All right. So, I, and, and I know they're not here to defend themselves, but once again, it looks like there's been a litany of decisions made with a certain degree of trust and professionalism with Trinity that that unfortunately, for whatever reason some factors not under their control, some factors under their control. That's where we found out between February and September that we were five million underfunded. Is that, is that an accurate statement? That's a fair statement. That is a fair statement. I think it's also, and I think Councilor Farwell, you're probably right. We probably put a little too much faith in Trinity, not to throw Trinity under the bus or anything, but we put, a, we put our faith I sat in on the meeting and I looked them in the face and said, you're going to build this for $12 million and you're going to 
you're going to jeopardize your feet? They said yes. Well, it's, it's one of those situations where if it sounds too good, it probably was too good. Uh, my last question for Mr. Condon, uh, and I did read your certification. Uh, believe it or not, I still take those under heavy consideration uh, from years ago. Are you, are you still uncomfortable with this, or has anything happened that might materially change no. the, the, the conditions that you outlined in your certification letter for the well, $5 million? Well, when the certification was filed, it was just a few weeks ago, when I was told we need $5 million. There had been a little bit of discussion over the course of the summer that this project was short and $2 million wasn't going to be sufficient but it was in late August, early September, where I was told in a meeting in the mayor's office, the amount that we need is an additional $5 million. And we wanted to get the borrowing authorization for that in front of the city council as soon as we could. So I submitted it knowing only that there was about $130,000 that the parking authority estimated as being available to service it from the new garage, and a little bit of leftover money from the first $2 million authorization <laughs> with respect to the diff zone. So we submitted it with the certification that's in place now that said we may not have sufficient money. But after we did that, we've had the parking authority take a look at what they could contribute. We've got a vote of the authority board saying they will contribute anything short on the diff zone or tax revenues to close the gap. And also, the Board of Assessors has looked at the diff zone with a fresh set of eyes to see if there's additional revenue that could be attributed to it from diff tax growth. And there is. There's about six, four hundred thousand dollars almost $500,000 in additional diff money beyond the 190 that they uh, provided to us a couple of years ago as the estimate of growth. And when you combine that with the additional parking authority revenues that could be made available, we've got about $600,000 worth of coverage. This borrowing, if we do it, would range in cost. It depends upon whether we did 20 years or 30 years. It depends upon whether we sell the bonds with level principal payments, which means declining interest or more like a mortgage loan level payments. But the cost annually would range from about $325,000 to $475,000. And four seventy-five dollars is the, is the most conservative thing you could do. It's a 20-year pay down with the level principal. So we're covered on that $475,000 in cost with the additional diff estimate alone, plus a little bit of extra from the parking authority. So I will provide a new certification letter that's unconditional so that your your concerns can be eliminated, I think, with respect to the, the certification letter itself. And what do you anticipate the interest? Uh, the, the well, it would depend upon how we structured the borrowing. Uh, and it, it, right now, interest rates are going up. So there's a little bit of risk in that. Uh, but let's see. I get all Approximately. If, let's, let's just take the just 20 or 30 Like 4%, right? something like that. Oh, okay. Just, I've got a sheet here with that on it, if I can find it. Well, the true interest cost on the, ch on the cheapest is about less than 3%, and okay. more than that on the more expensive, it could be 4%. So we're, we're I think 4% would, would be a safe bet because I think we could borrow for less than that right now. Okay. Uh, and by the way, Mr. May, thank you for the information you provided. And I was going to ask you if you were going to give another updated certification, and I think that's important. Yeah, uh, that'll be coming I, in. I think for the public, it, you know, this is a revenue generating project. This isn't where we're just borrowing five more million and throwing it into a building and, and, and not getting a payback. I mean, over a certain period of time, we will recoup the, the funds. And I, I, uh, I, I think that's healthy for the city. And uh, I thank everyone for their uh, comments tonight and for the documentation you've provided. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Cruz, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fowell actually answered uh, quite a few of the things I want to talk about. Um, I think probably Bob Jenkins. The negotiations with Trinity were for the plans? Were for the plans initially, for the plans and also the site. They would not. They would not negotiate the site until we mm -hmm. which for us made sense. Um, however, to get back to that point where we were talking about earlier by Councilor Rodriguez about a partnership, um, my naivete thinking that Trinity as a private development would be a partner, mm -hmm. um, but everything is a negotiation with them. Uh, from the plans to the site to so on the plans, I want to get back to that. They 
intimated or they told you these were 60% plans, 70%? They told us what they were. However, when I brought on Pink, I asked Pink to go over and assess what we were getting. Mind you, it's only eight hours in a day. We had to negotiate. I needed those plans because I did not want to go out and hire a new architect because that's starting from scratch. Um, I guess Alicia, if, you guys if she went could out come up and looked at those plans, you want to give an assessment on how <coughs> you look at those plans and your thoughts? So, good evening. Thanks for being here. Good evening. We, we, thank you. We had a meeting at their downtown office that lasted probably maybe hour and a half, hour and a quarter, and they gave us an overview of the, of the project, and during that time, myself and um, another project manager, we were supposed to go through those plans and specifications and determine whether or not they were 60%. Um, the time allotted to do so was not fair, and so what we did is we had to skim and use our, our judgment and our experience and say, okay, these look to be 60% construction documents. When Trinity provided the work product um, that the BRA paid for, the um, plans and specifications were entitled 70% construction documents. As um, Mr. Jenkins has said, in our opinion, we did not fail once we received the work product and we had adequate time to review that these plans were at 70% construction documents as well as the specifications. So there was a certain amount of due diligence, if you will, that had to be done in order to get to the point we thought we were at. And unfortunately, we weren't there. Um, there were a number of things that happened, I would say, at the 11th hour. Um, I've been in this business for about 20 years, and when you get a 70% CD set, building foundations and the location of the building foundation do not change. We found out for a number of reasons, <laughs> because the plans were actually not as far along in the specs as they were supposed to be, that they hadn't done their due diligence, that the um, engineers and the architects hadn't coordinated in terms of the columns and the spandrels and the overhang. That footprint moved probably four inches. Um, four inches may sound, I'm in the industry. Four inches is about four miles. <laughs> it's, okay. So Let I guess. You see my point, right? I, my question is leading to, did we sign an agreement with them that we were getting 70% construction plans? There was no agreement. We said we were partners, all partners. We assumed, once again, that we took it on face value. It was unfair for Pink to only be allowed an hour and a half to review these documents. Or we were under the, I, I, let's just say the BRA was under pressure. I was under pressure. I needed these plans. Um, so there was no agreement that we can fall back. Nothing written, nothing signed. There was nothing written. They, they told us we were getting 70%, but we were getting 55% of 50% plans, which is a mm -hmm. huge difference. Mm -hmm. And we received those plans who, and the architect owns a stamp on those plans. Correct. But what were we buying if we weren't buying his stamped plans? Um, we did buy his stamp, stamp plans, and that's the other hitch to this, is that in order for me not to go out and hire another architect, because you know how that, one, it would take too long because we're doing a procurement process before 49A, it was much easier, much more time efficient to have ICON. So there was another negotiation. But, with so I guess my question then becomes, so ICON was able to double dip. They had already been paid for these plans at that point. Um, it's funny you should say that because we thought about that too. Um, we negotiated with them 
It isn't necessarily double dipping, but to pay for the other, what I would call, let's, let's be fair, 50% of the plan. We didn't pay twice as much, but we paid more than I would have thought we would pay. Just to so they had already been paid by Trinity to get 50% plans, let's say. Yes. And we are and paying them the more than, than 50%. My personal opinion. Yes, my personal opinion, we paid more than what they got for the 50%. Yeah, this is true. Yes. And that's on the, and you can see that in the budget. And I can tell you. And then I guess my last question would be for uh, Ms. Tony. I sell plumbing and heating supplies. I'm in the industry. And we are seeing right now, due mostly to the tariff situation, and <coughs> many industries jumped on it before any of the tariffs were put in. But we're seeing about 10 to 15 percent increases. This seems to be much higher. So, uh, that, and I don't sell cement or anything, so that could be no, a, a, a product that. One thing you have to take into consideration is that private construction is very different than public construction. Mm -hmm. Public construction is more stringent, which means that it's more laborious to bring the construction manager on board, um, as well as there are qualifications that you have to go through as opposed to private construction. So the nature of it, one of the, um, the cons is that it can cost a little bit more. And in fact, it does. But the flip side of that is it gives you a team that is um, supposed to be more collaborative, more anticipatory, and you have a construction manager who is fleshing out those unforeseen conditions. So when you get to construction, you have a level of surety that you're not going to have um, unanticipated things come up. Therefore, your contingency that you're carrying is less. Um, so yes, to your point, and, and then there was also the transition in many ways, the learning curve. You know, Icon had a different team when it was private construction. Then they bought, brought on their public construction team. So you had changes there. Um, and so the consultants that they were using, um, they had to get their teams who understood public construction because it is very specific and it's a specialty in some ways if you've never worked on it before. So all of that, um, you know, coupled with the fact that, and, and I was constantly saying that, you know, construction prices don't, <laughs> go down, they, they go up. And so we're looking at a time period as well. We're looking at a private developer um, who does financial engineering and who has the ability to um, do the ads and the deducts and make things maybe, how do I say this, look as if a garage at a, a particular point in time is valued at 12 million, but maybe that's not the true cost, if you know what I'm saying. I, I do, and I, I, a little bit of that is I'm asking you right. specifically for the public to understand, and Council Fowler, when you were asking, part of the reason when it was gonna go the other way that Trinity feels they can build it that way is private, if, if they're not going through all public procurement laws and, and uh, Gusta, is it Gustin Bacon or uh, Davis Bacon? Davis -Bacon. Uh, you can save two to three million dollars. You know, um, sometimes it's hold your nose and don't look, but that is a big part of where the difference is. And I, I just, it seems like a big jump, a bigger jump than what the industry is doing right now. And again, some of the things that are in this in a parking garage are not the same as in my industry, but it's, we're talking a third as opposed to as opposed to 10 to 15 percent. Right, so you know the industry standard and again it's it's regionally based. Um, I want to say is anywhere I've heard twenty thousand dollars per space versus twenty five thousand. If you do the calculation it's actually thirty six thousand dollars for four hundred and fifteen spaces. So if you factor in all those things that have um, inflated that price because of time, um, are we in the ballpark? 
yes, I mean, it is the, it's the cost. It's what the, the uh, trade contractors had said, here's my bid, and this is what this project will cost. And we have that. Um, but, you know, we're in, we're in Massachusetts, we're in New England, and things tend to be higher, costs tend to mm -hmm. be higher. So um, to answer your question, yes, um, it's, it's 15 million versus, versus 12 million in hard costs. And I guess the, just my frustration, I mean, Mr. Jenkins, I'm sure you're, I mean, the fact that we felt we needed to get ICON because they already were part of the process, but if they then brought in a whole different team, we didn't need to be with ICON. We really could have been with, well, I mean, we would have had to go to a bidding process, I guess, which it would have added time, but right. it seems like, uh, seems like they're getting a, a pretty nice bite at the apple twice. Well, I wouldn't phrase it because I'm just listening to Alicia and, I, and to be fair with ICON, it was a transition from them to bring in from their private team to their public team. And then also understanding Mass Journal Law 149A, um, it's a special, and they're learning, and this is their public team. So I, I thought, and I was a little bit disappointed, I thought that their public team would be a bit further along, right? And so. And not to throw them under the bus, but I have had to help and coach them to bring them along. And I mean, we're a team now, so right. so that's what you do. But I thought that they do they would get be... to bill us hours while you're coaching them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that they would be more up to speed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions, Council Rodriguez? Please. <clears throat> Quick question. Um, I'm not exactly sure if this is for you, Mr. Jenkins, or or, or Bob Malley, but. What is the projected gross revenue of this garage once it's built? Gross? Yes. About 300. Well, in the first year, about $370,000. That it will bring in as, as revenue is concerned? Right. About $370,000 gross, about 240 in expenses. OK. Um, you had talked to, at least to me at, at your office, in terms of uh, Mr. Jenkins actually said that this isn't going to cost the taxpayers of the city uh, money. So if you're bringing in 300 and something thousand and you need 400 and something thousand, where's the difference coming from? Well, it's 370,000 gross. That's not net. Right. About 140,000 net. Right. So where's the rest coming from? It's the debt from the debt. The, oh, the whole amount? Yeah. We think so, yes. 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 We think so. Anything above that, the garage or the parking Yeah, our, our board of directors voted to uh, to fund anything uh, between uh, the amount of the bond and the amount of the difference. Mel, I just explain because because I know what you're talking about because I met with you. But explain if you could to the councils that aren't aware of parking meters and how some right, of the how some of the revenue is going to be. Actually, that's what I wanted them to, to touch bases on. Well, that's yeah, why I okay. actually was but, asking um, this. Our parking study came out uh, 2017. We've been working bit by bit. Right, um, on the, the uh, uh, suggestions, the recommendations of the parking study. One of the major recommendations was to add metered parking in the areas downtown that are now free parking, right, to monetize all the parking downtown. So that the, uh, rather than the taxpayers funding all that space, right, it would be rate payers, so people who use it, right? Everybody else is doing it, right? It's done, you know, every way you go. Um, that's one extra source of income, right? Um, I, I showed you a pro forma, I believe, um, Council Rodriguez, Council Sullivan, I think I've met with most of you. Um, and conservatively estimating that could bring in a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year, gross. Right? Then you have collections, you have. And we will put up the money from our capital projects to purchase those, right, and have them installed. But then we have money from our other garage, the Adams garage, we have money from uh, the lots downtown. So I gave a pro forma for the whole department to Jay, right, uh, in order to show that we can cover uh, anything that, any difference between the bond and the debt. So when this new certification letter from me comes in, you'll have the pro forma that Bob is mentioning, but you'll also have the assessment 
of individual properties within the uh, district improvement financing zone that came from the Board of Assessors and the estimated incremental revenues on each of those properties that come to the nearly $500,000 that I was talking about. And if you read the language on the bond, uh, bond order, First and foremost, this project is supposed to be financed by DIF revenues. That's, that's the intent of it. So if we're correct and that $400,000 in DIF revenues is realized, uh, the assessors have put their name to it, then we won't be looking to the uh, parking garage revenues to finance the bond payments to be paid for by the DIF. If it is insufficient, then we have a backup in the parking authority revenues. And so I, I think we're pretty well covered in it. And as I said, both of those sources of information will be provided to you when the certification revision comes in. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, I think it's one of those things, there's an old saying that says it's, it's time for, to sink or swim. Uh, we've got an opportunity from, um, from, from the state where they're offering us $10 million to build this project that we gravely need in this city. Uh, I think we stand with two options, either return $10 million to the state or we do what we need to do to bring this project to fruition. Uh, no one, I mean, when I heard about the extra $5 million, I think I almost had a heart attack uh, because I actually thought we did the $2 million, we were uh, basically free to move on. But it sounds as, as if uh, there were some roadblocks that we didn't anticipate, and I think now we have this project in front of us, and it's something that at least from you see in, our, in the renditions and the pictures that we've seen, uh, some of us have fallen for this particular project in the, in the downtown area because we see this as something that will bring a, a downtown back slowly, but you know, at least it's something palpable that will bring our, our, our downtown back. And I think it probably makes very little sense for us to pose this um, in terms of moving forward with this because I don't know how you guys feel about this, but returning $10 million to the state of monies that we can kind of infuse into this community just absolutely makes no sense. So I um, hate to do it, but I think it's one of those things that we have very little choice but to move forward with this stuff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is that the form of a motion? Yes, sir. Second. So it's a favorable recommendation back to the full council. Yes, I think Is that on the motion, council? Oh, no, I, I wanted to before you. Oh, you want to speak, so you want to speak on the motion, council? Because well, it was a second on it, so you want to speak. Go ahead. But, Go okay. ahead, I'm, I'm sorry. You didn't realize that I had my hand up prior to all that. No, I, oh, yeah. I didn't. Okay. That's Thank all right. You. No, no, no. I just want to make it clear here that you know, nothing has gone as smoothly as everyone would like, but this is somewhat typical. Um, I believe the state should have been you know, more generous to us, but I'm um, kind of biased on that. Um, the thing is, <clears throat> is that... When you write a grant, and I've written much smaller ones, you always write it for more because the anticipation will be, you know, instead of, you know, the cost. So that was one thing there. I, I have found that I'm, I'm very excited about Pink because when I was there when BRA, you know, supported, the, you know, one of their um, meetings, which, by the way, anyone in the public can attend and learn about all this, that they had years of experience in municipal garages. They're bringing with themselves experience. We, how would I say, we ended up with an architect. Maybe if we could go back, we might have chosen another one. But the other part of this is, is in the meanwhile, while all this is being planned, there's other projects taking place that want more parking because some of us attend the meeting once a month at the parking authority, with the exception of one this year. And a lot of people come in like this looking for some parking and begging for some parking. So, I mean, I'm beginning to wonder if maybe we should have made this parking garage larger because every time we turn around, someone wants a parking space, space is. So this is already over three quarters of the way full before it's, you know, it's even built. The first day it opens, that's how many spaces are, you know, are taking it up. Meanwhile, others that have been, how would I say it, for free, the anticipation is to get revenue from them. So it just seems that we're in a growth, in a, how would I say, in a um, mode here where we're just going to grow. But we've had some complications and some misinformation at times. And I will say I am grateful that this, this is a public project because every single step of the way, we as a city council or any one of the residents of the city can say, where's it going and where's this money being spent? And they are obliged 
to inform us. And I'm a strong proponent of the transparency, and it's not that I don't trust anyone. It's just sometimes it gets interesting. I will say that this was startling to find out about the steel tariffs and how much they're affecting us, but it would appear that this is going to be something we're going to see for some time to come, unfortunately. And uh, so there's other people I've been speaking with because we're planning on, how would I say it, uh, changing some buildings or how would I say, renovating some buildings that are going to need steel in the city that are not revenue generating. So this is a, you know, a time for us to look at all this and definitely speak to our elected officials at um, the federal and state level on this issue. So anyway, thank you for allowing me to speak thank on you, this counselor. issue. Thank you. Any other councilors want to speak on the motion? Councilor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on the record, I would like to say that um, I'm very excited about this budget and I think it's wonderful. Um, it's unfortunate that we do not have that five extra million dollars and stuff like that, but I think given the situation that we have in the city and of course looking at Main Street, I think this project will definitely uh, bring some light. And I know that you guys uh, do have the willingness, why not the determination to actually do what you think is best for it. But like my, con my colleague just said, Council what you guess? I mean, I think it would be nice for us to have that $15 million, but unfortunately, I mean, we cannot, we cannot kill $10 million. So I think it's wise for us to not just um, advance into it, but also think about, you know, the next step. And we got to, if we're gonna apply for another grant, why not ask for more, like my um, colleague, Council Ann Bolga just mentioned. So I think um, it's a wonderful thing. And um, this is something that I supported day one, but I just wanna have some, you know, details and clarification in regard to, you know, who's gonna do what and how we're gonna do it. So I'm excited about it and I hope that um, it will not take too long for us to actually um, um, accomplish this thing. So best of luck to all of you. And um, like I said, I am 100% um, in favor of this. So you can count on my vote on that. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Castro. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know who to pose this question to. I support the downtown garage. I think it, it is very important for the downtown area. Five million dollar increase is a lot of money, and so I have to ask this: Is there any way we can get more money from the state toward the construction of this? I know that the ten million dollars was an unusually high grant. Yes, it is unusually high. It is the most the state has given out. I would say with some certainty that if you even ask for an additional one million dollars, I think you'll get a, a strong denial because they gave 10 million, um, which is the most, am I correct? This is the most- Yes. Mass. It was the second largest for that year. For that year, yes. Yes. Right. So we've kind of, I've always kind of floated it out that we're short and it isn't like they don't know. And they <laughs> haven't come and said, oh, you know what? We got an extra million or two to give you. So I wish I could say it's more positive, but Mr. May. Uh, uh, Councilor. Uh, the numbers that we've been talking tonight have been for the garage and the new road and some improvements to Petronelli. We do plan on applying to MassWorks for just the Petronelli and the new road section. Right. So we could get some future money. Uh, we weren't going to begin construction of the new road until the garage was complete because it plows through some of Robert's surface lots. Um, <coughs> that he owns that until. But uh, we, we need a place to put those cars and we need to finish the garage first. So there, but there is a possibility of getting some more grant dollars in the future. Good. For the road. For the road. For the road. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, on the motion, um, I would Counselor, like to ask. Councilor, um, Councilor. Yes. Mr. Lally has to speak oh. before you. You've already spoken. Mr. Uh, Lally. I'll, I'll defer to. Uh, well, I'll, I'll defer to Councilor. No, no, you're fine. You can go. I'll wait. I was going to, I was going to, you know. Just inquire if we should still be doing this while there's a motion on the floor. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, call it, but I'll, I'll defer to the councilor if that's all right. No, it's okay. You can go. I'll wait for you. I was, I was actually just going to call the vote. So okay, no problem. So um, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask um, Mr. May, you know, just a few questions in regard to um, some of the art. So um, given the fact that I know we have a lot, a lot of young people in the city that, that do arts, um, do you plan on actually reaching to them too? put some ads, you know, on this building. I'm assuming that I see you got some painting and stuff like that. So I know that, um, I forgot the name of that center down there. There are so many talented people in the city, so. Yes, down on, on the Dover Gallery and, and yeah. some other places. We do have a, um, uh, a call to artists prepared okay. mm -hmm. that uh, we will be putting out once we know that 
we're moving forward. Okay. Um, but uh, we're looking for someone to design the scrim mm -hmm. that uh, will be on the facade that faces Petronelli Way. We're looking for unique and interesting art. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's the biggest art element that we have going. The reason why I'm asking you this question because I've been approached by a few young folks um, in this city who actually asked me to actually put some, I don't know, design on some of the empty building that we have, and I told him I really don't know. Council, there's a motion on the floor, and this falls outside of the purview of the motion, so we can either discuss this and have the motion pulled under Robert's rules, uh, and then take another formal motion, or we can do this matter, because it's not germane to what's before us right now. So if you want to still talk about it, respectfully, you'd have to pull the motion. If not, we'd have to do it at another date under a resolve. But I'm assuming, Mr. Chairman, this is in regard to the parking space, right? You're talking about a facade, correct? No, but it has to do with it. In you the, want to I mean, pull your motion right now under Robert's rules? Yes or no? Because if not, I'm just going to call it. Uh, I, I think we're discussing. Call the motion. Call the motion under Robert's yeah, rules as chairman. So there's a motion on the floor. It was properly seconded. It's a favorable recommendation for collectively four and five back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed. That motion carries collectively. Number four and five, they're both favorable back to the full council. Number six, please. Is resolved that the chief that the chief financial officer and the mayor be invited to a meeting of the council to discuss potential adjustments to any other employees or employee groups as a result of the consul consultant study the financial impact upon the city and that a copy of any report generated by the council sorry consultant be distributed to the council invited honorable mayor bill carpenter john a condon chief financial officer Council follow yeah, good evening mr condon uh, i know what you can and can't tell us and i and i uh, i read the mayor's email let, let me tell you the the practical aspects of this my understanding is and you stop me if i'm wrong that we did hire a consultant the consultant did go through departments at city hall that person sat down and interviewed various employees to, defi to uh, find out the scope of their duties and responsibilities. At some point, that consultant made a report, I presume, to the mayor. Uh, do you happen to know how much we spent? On the consultant? Yes. Off the top of my head, I don't recall, maybe $20,000, but I'm not sure about Maybe even less than that. I'm All not right, sure We about have that. a couple of more departments that are going to be done. Am I not? Is that uh, not correct? Well, we had, um, it was by union as opposed to department counselor. So the, the first report was um, for the so-called BCE union yep. and the City Hall Administrative Services of the clerks. So any union, any department which had those membership. I, the uh, bid, was, bid was through the personnel department. I, it was in their budget, and I don't remember exactly how much it was. I don't think it was even 20000 It might have been closer to ten. Well, so the report's been concluded. Yeah. Uh, you've described the process correctly. The in consultant interviewed employees, asked for their job description, uh, asked for their job duties, consulted with the department head to see if there was agreement on those job duties. We got job descriptions written up. Both department head and employee had a chance to review those. In most cases, they did. Uh, there was a market survey performed for the um, compensation, and then there was a series of recommendations as to what a more equitable compensation structure would look for, look like. In the report is that table, and that's what we're at the bargaining table at the moment for. Then in addition to that, the library union also agreed in its contract to engage the same consultant. And the uh, first, their months behind where the other two unions were. In the first meeting that the city's involved in, because the union uh, reports through the library director to the board of trustees, uh, we're involved in a union meeting uh, with them sometime in early November, and I don't know quite where we'll be on that. We probably will be done with the first two unions soon, as the mayor said in his communication, there's no obligation to pay. Uh, it was just an obligation to fund the study. The cost so far don't look to be extreme, but we're bargaining over which of these do we do it and on what pace. We're very close on the clerks, not quite as close on the BCEU, and I would expect at some time, not too distant future, we'll be coming to you with the report and the funding request if we get to agreement. And I, I think that's important, counselors, because either, well, unwittingly we raise the expectations to people that they had hopefully some salary adjustments coming in. And for people who are getting close to retirement, yep. as you know, that, that, that makes a difference. And we've turned around and we have put some people at the top step now. Uh, 
a relatively easy process when it's an ordinance position. Yeah. But uh, I, I just don't want the rank and file people who come into City Hall or to our other city offices every day and, and do an outstanding job and, and we're actually woefully understaffed in many different departments. I, I don't want them to think that they're forgotten, that we paid a consultant, they came in and we're not making progress. I'm very happy to hear that you are actively bargaining, that you do think you'll have this perhaps wrapped up. Don't retire until we have it wrapped up now in February. Uh, because because the message should be that we support all of our employees. Yeah, the, the, I don't. I don't want people to feel as though. And I agree. With, I agree with that, Council. We don't have an obligation to fund the study, uh, and so our obligation is to try to come to an agreement as to how much money we'll pay. Many. The, the study showed, in fact, that many, many, many of these titles are not underpaid, and we agreed as part of the going in agreement that nobody would get hurt by this study. That if the study showed that you were maybe a few thousand dollars above where the market sh said you should be, you would carry a personal rate until you've retired and the next person would come in at a cheaper salary. But we did agree that if we could find a way to fund the recommendations to get a person closer to that market equity salary, we'd try to do it. And that's where we're still talking. Um, we had uh, some delays over the summer because of schedules. We were closer last spring, then Maureen Cruz retired. Now how do we replace her on the, on the, on the process? So there's been a little bit of a delay because of that. But we're getting back together. In fact, I met with two of the attorneys uh, today uh, as to how we get this back on track. So and your, your resolve may have had some impetus on that. <laughs> you know, again, I don't, want, I don't want the rank and file people to feel that we've forgotten them. And I, I think that's a fair if, thing. If no one has any questions, I'll move favorable. If someone does, I'll, uh, I'll I would move. suggest that we do a postponement on this since it's still okay. a pending matter with, with other collective bargaining units. Yep. I think it would make sense not, not to send this January, back favorable. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. it should be postponed. Yeah. Three months. That's fine. Then I'll, I'll move to postpone to January FinCon. Okay. Motion on the floor is probably second to favorable. I'm not a favorable. Postponement until uh, first FinCon in January. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, it's going to carry. Thank you, Thank Mr. Conner. Council, is anything else before us tonight? Council Beauregard, followed by Fowl, please. Okay. You don't well, need to stand, Council. Yes, well, yes, we do. Remember we, yes, remember we discussed that. We want to make sure that I'm seen. My colleague here is a little bigger than me. And um, anyway, so first of all, <laughs> last week um, we had a discussion about uh, the shopping carts, and I believe that it was mentioned um, that you know we have an ordinance, and we've discussed prior to the meeting this evening that maybe we need to again. I'm not you know pointing the finger that a department's being negligent, but. I mean, this shopping cart thing is a little bit out of control, and I, I know that I'm not the only one that's seen them. I saw eight on Grove Street the other day, and in one block area. Come on, there isn't even a grocery store on Grove Street. I mean, what are all these shopping carts doing in one spot? Well, Council, just point yeah. of information, when, when you see these, do you then call Pat Sullivan's group? Well, I was doing that, and I was told by someone in that department that we're supposed to contact the store. Now, no, I, no, yeah. absolutely not. Okay, and I, I was, drafted the ordinance. Yes, I know. I Almost know you did Sullivan's after the ordinance. Office. I'm sorry, and I think that this is where there's a little bit. We're going to use the term disconnect, and that's that's why I wanted to follow up with this because you can't quite make out. What's, a lot of times what it says on the shopping cart, let alone be able to make a phone call to all of them. So I just thought that maybe we need to revisit this a little bit and um, think about how, how would I say it? we can tighten it up because the city had never had an ordinance, now we have one, and it just takes a while to kick things in. And then my other discussion this time around was um, the homeless situation. I will say we're trying to work on it downtown. Lieutenant Linehan's been terrific, but there is only one Lieutenant Linehan, and, um, and, but there's many homeless, and I just believe that this is something we, we need to start looking at more closely. So I, I want to bring that up now, especially with the winter months coming. And um, that's- Council, uh, relative yeah. to uh, the shopping cart ordinance, my suggestion would be if you're not getting any satisfaction, file a resolve. Okay. Invite the store managers of all the respective supermarkets in the city of Brockton to appear before the Finance Committee. Because under the, under the, the uh, enacted ordinance, they have a duty. It's their personal property. It's valued about $400 per shopping cart. And it's specific on how they have to label it, how long it takes them to retrieve it, 
there's, there's all parameters within that. So that might be uh, a way to give them a little kick to get some action. That's just my humble suggestion. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else before Council Fowler? Moment please. of personal privilege? <laughs> of course. My confidential, reliable informants, I hope, have given me the correct information that Councillor Cruz has a birthday today. Oh. Yeah. And I guess he's yeah, yeah, rapidly that. closing in on me. However, I will maintain a certain distance, but happy birthday, Councillor. Birthday, birthday. 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 How old are you now? Happy birthday. 62. <laughs> Councilor Monaghan is 62 prior to me. So. That's correct. And I'll be 63. Councilors, just remember, uh, Thursday night at 6 o'clock here, we have our ordinance committee meeting. Uh, we have both agenda items relative specific to marijuana. Uh, Attorney Resnick has uh, advised us to proceed relative to ordinance on marijuana first. That's our top priority because we're under a time frame. And then the other ordinances that you talked about tonight, um, they're in the queue. Uh, and there's also some constituents and a former mayor that's been... Uh, calling, uh, not you, Mr. Mayor, other than Mr. Mayor Wainwright, calling about certain uh, agenda items that are in the queue. So that's how we're going to move forward. And again, uh, I, I would suspect that Dennis will be back, I would think, in early November. Anything else before us? Actually, I would take a moment of personal privilege. Sure. Since you brought up my birthday, I'd like to wish my son, Michael, is, shares my birthday, so. Nice birthday present, huh? I, I believe you're just 1026, so congratulations. Exactly. <laughs> Anything else before us? Adjourned. 62. Just...